The first time I saw a Jones bike was shortly after I had gotten back into mountain biking. It's not all that different looking than a quote-unquote normal bike, but factor in the loop bars, big tires, and rigid fork, and even the most clueless person will know something is out of the norm. After reading more about them, I was definitely intrigued by the Colt following, but I wasn't sure what I'd use it for, how I'd like it, and even how it would fit. I kept an eye out for years, hoping a used one would pop up that would give me a chance to try it out without investing too much money in case I didn't like it. This summer, I had the chance to test out a few Jones products, and when that was done, Jeff asked if I'd be interested in reviewing one of his bikes. Of course, I jumped on that offer, and I've been riding the LWB on a regular basis for the last couple of months. After trying it out on different types of trails and roads and with a few different tire setups, it's finally time to talk about what I think of this unique bike. Let's talk about Jones bikes in general first. Jones bikes has two primary bikes they offer, the SWB and the LWB. Despite having different geometry, the fit of the two is essentially the same with a tall stack and super short reach paired with their loop handlebar. The SWB has a shorter wheelbase from shorter chainstays and a steeper head tube angle, while the LWB is slacker and has a super long rear end. The LWB is also designed around the large 29 plus tire size with the SWB focused more on 27 5 plus and 29er. Given how much I love 29 plus, it was an easy choice for me on which bike to go for. Bikes are usually designed with a specific type of riding in mind, so what about the Jones bikes? I'll get into my own opinion on this later, but if you look at the site, it'll tell you. The Jones bike is a bike for riding fast, slow, the rough with the smooth, safely, aggressively, laid back or raging, with a big load or stripped to the bare essentials, on road, dirt, mud, snow, in the mountains, on flatlands, around town or across the county, around the world or your local loop, for getting rad or just getting away. While that sounds like a whole lot of uses, I will say that after riding it for a while now, I think it's not far off from the truth. One of the biggest takeaways I had is that this bike is extremely comfortable while also being incredibly capable. The reach and stack put you in a very upright riding position that you could stay in for hours on end. But unlike most bikes that have you in this body position, the big 29 plus tires, slackish front end, and proper mountain bike gears and brakes make it able to tackle some pretty difficult trails. It's like having the comfort of a beach cruiser, but the capability of a mountain bike. The long rear end did take some getting used to. It's not exactly easy to take tight switchbacks or lift the rear end up and around things when it gets really technical. But once you adapt your riding style to compensate, it becomes more of a blessing than a curse. At its core, it's still a fully rigid bike, so unless you have joints of steel, you're gonna have to take different lines and avoid massive drops and jumps anyway. I love rigid 29 plus bikes, but when I first got this, I was still trying to ride it like a hardtail and was a little disappointed on the first couple of mountain bike focused rides. Once my brain caught up with things, the joy of tall plush tires and no suspension quickly came back and I was able to enjoy blue and even some black diamond trails. Despite the short reach, it feels balanced and planted. There's no front wheel lift up steep climbs, while the plus tires also create all of the traction you need to keep the rear end from spinning out. Even when standing, which by the way is really natural feeling because of that short reach, the bike stays stuck to the ground. In short, this thing climbs like a mountain goat. So I've talked a lot about how it does as a mountain bike, but that's not the only type of riding I did on it. I also took it for some longer rides on paved and dirt roads and found that while it's slower than a typical gravel bike, it's not nearly as slow as you'd think. I mentioned this in my review of the Jones loop bars, but the comfort level seems to almost level the playing field because I don't feel any discomfort or anything that makes me let off the gas. Despite not looking super fast, I was still able to put in a pretty good pace not far off from my cutthroat riding into town to run errands or out on my typical gravel loops. If you are wanting a more aero position though, you could always throw the narwhal attachment Jones offers on it. I just didn't feel a need for it. 
The funny thing I found with those tamer rides though, was that I was more open to hitting little obstacles and exploring offshoot trails along the way. And that's probably my favorite thing about this bike. While it's not meant for racing or double blacks or massive drops, it still gives me a feeling that I could at least attempt some of that and still have fun. With a busy schedule, I tend to plan my routes on trail forks before I go out and ride, and that also determines what bike or even wheel set I use. The more I rode the LWB, the more I started to deviate from those plans along the way because I realized I could without worrying about having to hike a bike or being completely underbiked. I did find that the tire choice made a huge difference in what this bike was able to handle. As I mentioned, the first couple rides were a little disappointing for me when it came to mountain bike capabilities. While the V-Tire T-Fatty tires were great on tamer rides, I found they were seriously lacking in cornering abilities at speed. The first thing I tried was putting a 27.5 fat tire up front, and boy did that change how the bike rode. I could corner hard, take technical trails faster, and just generally have a lot more fun on blue and black trails. While I don't think it makes the bike a full-on fat bike for snow riding, it does make it a great option for people who get a little snow here and there throughout the winter. I eventually swapped the fat tire out for a 29 plus Duro Crux, and that has definitely been my favorite setup because it's lighter and faster than a fat tire, but is way more aggressive than the T-Fatty. Jones Bikes knows that tire choice is key, which is why you can order the bike with, as they call them, smooth or knobby tires. It seemed like a weird choice to me at first to offer such different ends of the tire spectrum, but it makes a lot of sense now. If I was buying this bike for more pavement, gravel, and hard pack, the smooth tires or even an XC tire would be my choice. If I wanted something for bike packing, mountain bike trails, and generally go anywhere riding, a more aggressive tire is the key. The final thing I want to touch on is to answer the question, what is this bike even for? Most people buy a bike for a specific purpose. So how exactly do you classify the LWB? At first glance, it seems to be a towny bike with some weird geometry, mountain bike components, and oversized tires. Add in that long, vague description from Jones themselves, and you're probably even more confused. I'm gonna simplify things for you. In my view, at least, the Jones LWB is essentially a drop bar mountain bike designed to never use drop bars. It's for the person that says, I really want a Salsa Fargo or a Kona Sutra or a Tumbleweed Stargazer, but I really hate drop bars and I wanna hit real mountain bike trails. It's an ATB with mountain bike jeans. It prioritizes comfort over aerodynamics and mounting locations over total weight. Its sweet spot is on dirt and gravel roads, double track trails, and green to easier black single track. With faster rolling tires, you can move that sweet spot more towards hard pack and even pavement, or more aggressive tires will shift it to make blue and even black diamond trails incredibly fun. When I was first looking into a Jones bike, one of my biggest concerns came from all of the comments I heard about a super different riding position you just had to try to know if you like it. There was kind of this mythical feeling about these bikes and the way they were designed. I think that view is doing a disservice to the bike by making it seem so out there you can't even comprehend it. Yes, you're definitely more upright and the bars take some getting used to, but it's not even like going from a road bike to a mountain bike, so don't overthink it. Thinking back to the description from the Jones website, the LWB does pretty much fit every use case in the list. While I would say it's generally more suited to the mountain bike side of the spectrum over the road, it's a far cry from using your enduro bike to run around town. It's a bike that's easy to throw a leg over, and I think that's supported by the fact that of all the bikes currently in my shop, it's the one I find myself grabbing the most. It's comfortable, capable, versatile, and most importantly, a ton of fun. I think there's a lot of people out there who, like me, are pretty sure they'd like a Jones bike, but have been waiting for the unlikely chance they'll get to try one out in person. If that's you, I'd say stop waiting and just get one already. The fact that you even stumbled onto them and then did a bunch of reading into it means there's a pretty high chance it's the type of bike you're after. And after my experience, I really wish I hadn't waited. So, 
what's your experience with the Jones bike been? LWB, SWB, back in the plus era? Just let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe so you can see those videos when they're published. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.